It's another Monday here on City TV, and that only means one thing. The tracker is live and it's airborne. And just like we've been doing in the past two weeks, it's a national football agenda. That's mainly because the Black Stars of Ghana are in action as far as the AFCON 2021 qualifiers are concerned. Now, they've seen off South Africa and have their second game coming up against Sao Tome and Principe. That game is going to be on an artificial turf, and it has already started generating discussions. Also, there's a um, Ghana under 23s, the Black Meteors. They are up against neighbors Cote d'Ivoire. Now, Cote d'Ivoire, regardless of whatever level, have always been a tough nut to crack for Ghana. We'll see if Ibrahim Tanko and his men will be able to pick up one of the three tickets available for Tokyo 2020. And today's guest is one who has stayed committed to the game, played for VFB Stuttgart. He's played his football for Berlinensis. He's been all over the world as far as the game of football is concerned. He's played in Ghana's Olympic team and has also captained Ghana's Black Stars. These days, he moves players. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let him explain what that means, but he knows all about the business of football transfers. Joe Addo is my guest today on the track. Mr. Addo, it's a pleasure to have you. Pleasure is all mine. Um, before we even get into the thick of today's conversation, like I said, what have you been up to? Um, playing in the Olympic team, you've worked with Hearts of Folk for a bit, uh, you've captained the Black Stars. These days, when we ask of Joe Addo, what will we likely find him doing? Well, I'm very grateful to be on your program, and uh, it, it's really nice. Everybody here has been great uh, with me. So I want to say a big thank you to everybody nice for one. making it very comfortable for me to be nice here. Um, so I've been retired for about 14, 15 years now, and uh, what I do is try to help the young guys who are coming up mm -hmm. uh, find them clubs abroad. Yeah. Uh, I live in the United States, so most of the guys I take out go to America, but I have players all over the, play all over the world. Hmm. That sounds like a very interesting piece of business. How, how complicated is it to move players from here to, let's say, the MLS and the USL, especially when, <coughs> for instance, um, scouting videos are not plentiful down here and stuff like that? Uh, you hit the nail right on the head. It's very, very difficult. So what we do is, uh, because of what I've done in the past, yeah. and most of these guys who are taking my players are my former teammates, mm -hmm. uh, people I've worked with, people who know me and trust me. So they go by the word of mouth. They go by what I tell them. Mm. So it is, <coughs> it is very difficult for me to recommend somebody I've not seen or somebody I don't know because it goes with my reputation. Mm. So for me to go and tell somebody or a coach or, yeah. or a president of a club that yeah. I'm bringing in a player who yeah. has no videos, yeah. they have to really trust me to accept that player. So that's all I've been doing now. Mm. Now I see that things are changing in Ghana now. People are making yeah. videos and, and, and all that. But... It's very difficult to, to get our players from Ghana uh, to go outside. Extremely difficult. But we've tried to persevere and have some players uh, very successfully transfer. Hmm. Let's, let's get to the agenda of the day, which is AFCON 2021 qualifiers. Now, um, the first game is already out of the way. It was against the South African side that I personally expected more from. But on the day, they picked up one injury to one of their key midfielders. Mm -hmm. And Ghana managed to pick up a valuable result kept a clean sheet as well. Um, your opening impressions on that game before we even delve deeper? Yeah, I think um, it was a good game. And yeah. uh, we, we have played the game before, so yeah. I know how difficult it is. And I really, really commend our coaching staff. I think they hmm. did a great job yeah. because it's different when you play for a club because a club coach can have players for a year, six months, eight yeah. months. A national team coach, if lucky, can have the players for a week. And for one week, you bring these players from different countries, different backgrounds, to gel them together. And of course, the pressure of Ghana, yeah. you know, wanting to win at all costs, is very, very difficult on the coaches. So when I saw the game, and I've seen the game about four or five times, I, I like to watch videos after the game to see yeah. where we made mistakes, where we can improve and all yeah. that. And I thought our coaching staff did, did a great job. The players did well too, but I think mm. the coaching staff did it because the South Africans played really, really well. They yeah. did. Yeah. Before we scored the first goal, they were on top of us. Yeah. Their passes were crisp. They were, you know, they liked the short, short passes. So they played beautiful football, which suited our game. Yeah. You know, unlike playing against teams who play long balls and, and kick people and all that. The South African team is not like that. They like to play tactical. And that helped our game until mm. we scored. After yeah. we scored, our players got confidence. Then they start to relax and pass the ball around. So it became evident that we were going to win. But... Uh, congratulations to the whole team. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a good start 
for us. Mm. Uh, the most important thing is continuity. I think if we go to Satome and get a result, yeah. it will boost the confidence of these guys and sky is the limit for us. Now, before I even get to the debutants, because there were two debutants in the match there, Gideon uh, Mensah on the left-hand side and Baba Idrisu, much talked about after the game. Quick thoughts on CK Akono and um, his first game as assistant manager. I saw a couple of shots where he was on Kwesi Apia's shoulder sharing a word or two with him. How important is it to have an assistant manager that you gel with and an assistant manager who's also been in the shoes of a national captain who can lend some words to, to the team? Uh, I think it's commendable for the head coach to mm. find uh, CK and give him a job as his assistant. Having said that, I think Ibrahim Tanko also did a great job with the coach. Mm. If not for the Olympics, he was, might still be yeah. there. So we, we, have to, we don't have to forget that. But CK Akuno's pedigree speaks for itself. This guy is one of the few guys, or I can say the only Ghanaian player who captained a German team. I mean, it's not easy for us blacks to play abroad, let alone be a captain of a white team. And he was. I mm -hmm. think he and Mohamed Gargo, yeah. they, they, they've captained uh, teams in Europe. So CK knows it. He's been there. Apart from that, he's captain our national team, which yeah. Kwesi Apia also has. So the, the, is there, the pedigree is there. Yeah. Having said that, he's coached two of the biggest teams in Ghana. The True. pressures on those teams True. had given him a lot of experience. Yeah. So I had, I had no doubt that he was going to do good. But you have to see him work mm -hmm. to assess him. And mm -hmm. we Ghanaians want results. Yeah. And what they exhibited, the two of them, yeah. what they exhibited last time, I think it was wonderful. The camaraderie between the two was great. The way he comes in and out yeah. to talk to the coach, the respect level was there. Yeah. I mean, everybody, those who don't even go to the game, yeah. sitting on TV could see yeah. that the rapport between the two was great. Was great. So I hope they continue. I hope we get uh, results that we want. And uh, hopefully, I think we can move one step ahead. Because for me, qualifiers doesn't really bother Ghana yeah. too much. Although the pressures are there. We always qualify. True. But getting the trophy in tournament is where we, we lack. So I think with CK's uh, addition, we might jump that head up. Hmm. Now let's talk about the debutants. It's, it's never easy to come in as a debutant, especially for the Black Stars, because there are so many eyes on you uh, already on a team that has a fixed core. What did you make of Gideon Mensah's debut at left back? Because I'm asking this because left back, for as long as I can remember, has been a problem spot for the team. We've, I don't think we've ever had one left back that's played three years continuously in the Black Stars. It's true. It's very true. But we have two good left backs in that position competing. Mm. Maybe three. Yeah. But two, which we want Lumo Agbenenu mm. and Ali uh, Baba. 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 And we know how competitive they are on yeah. that left side. I remember in the Cup of Nations, Lumo started. Mm -hmm. He was okay. Yeah. But we wanted to see different version of uh, the, uh, the team. We yeah. brought Baba in, and Baba was excellent. True. So the competition was there. Yeah. Now, this time around, they went. And Gideon, I think, did a fantastic job. Look, playing for the national team yeah. is not easy. Wearing mm. that shirt, mm. being amongst people you've never seen. Some of these guys, he's only seen them on TV. Yep. So the yep. first time he's seen them, he's playing True. with them on the national True. assignment. The fans, having come back from AFCON, where people are ridiculing the team, for you to perform, I think he did excellent. And that's why I, I think a lot of people listening to our show today mm -hmm. will say, I'm hitting at the coach, the coach, the coach. Yeah. Look, when somebody does well, you need to praise him. If yeah. he doesn't do well, you need to criticize, you criticize constructively. I think the coaching staff did a fantastic job. And, 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 and that's where you have the coaching staff doing some bit of the work you're talking yes. about. So this is a list of the debutants invited by Kwesi Apia. So Tariq Jibrin in there. Mohamed Kudus, who ended up getting a goal eventually. There's Safiu Mumuni, Idris Ubaba, whom we'll be talking about in a bit. Entry, Ejehi, I had to pull out because of an injury. Mm -hmm. And then Mohamed Salisu also uh, suffered some injury as well in the Razak Abalora as uh, one of the new inclusions to the goalkeeping department. Yeah, you're making a point. And, and that is why coaching is so difficult at the national level. Yeah. Look, the last game we played, before we played South Africa, the last game yeah. we played, which people remember, was the AFCON. True. Our last game. Yeah. Now, Six of the players who play in that AFCON didn't play the game on Thursday. Now it was up to the coach to bring players that will fit into the culture of the national team or the play style that the coach needs. Mm. And he was able to bring uh, Joseph Edu, yep. who hasn't played much for the national team. He brought, obviously, uh, Gideon yeah. came in. He brought uh, in the midfield, we had Alfred him. Duncan. Yeah. And then up front, we had have, we have Emmanuel Barty. All these guys didn't play in the AFCON. 
So I know we all want results, we want to win. Yeah. But it's very difficult for the coach to try to put all these guys together and for them to perform. And they did. They did very, very well. So I commend the coaches. I also commend the players yeah. because sometimes, you know, the, the, the rod is so hard on the play, playing team, uh, the, uh, the players that, yeah. you know, they are, sometimes they get nervous and jittery. But this was an excellent. I mean, playing in your home mm -hmm. uh, country, yeah. seeing the fans go to the game, winning the game convincingly. I thought, I thought it was a great performance. Hmm. Quick one there. Now you can join the conversation via text and WhatsApp on your screens there. Yes, yes. So you can join the conversation there. 0550585832 there so we can interact. But Joe, quick quick thoughts again on um, the players arriving in Sao Tome. Now, uh, that's the next agenda. It's, it's interesting because the conversation has switched from just about football to the playing surface. I... I I don't know how to take that because I say that when these players come down to Ghana, basically AstroTurf is what is the new norm now and they train on these uh, pitches. Why should it be a problem now that we have to use an AstroTurf in an official CAF uh, sanctioned game? Very difficult, very difficult. Uh, I retired because of AstroTurf. Oh, you are kidding? Yes, because you know what goes in into mm -hmm. making an AstroTurf yeah. is, is not the same as a natural turf. Mm. You know, because it's concrete yeah. and they make it artificial. Yeah. So for older players or people with injuries with their knees and their ankles and stuff, the impact on the field is, is, is very, very strong. And that's why mm. a lot of countries don't approve of it. Yeah. I know when I was playing in the United States, there were some few fields that had AstroTurf. Yeah. And it made me retire early because there are certain things I can do on a grass field that I cannot do on an AstroTurf. Now, having said that, it's the same turf that the, both teams will play on. Mm -hmm. So th there are advantages and disadvantages. I don't think we should complain too much about the field. Yeah. We should just go in and play. And uh, I saw Nigeria play last night against, uh, I think, Lesotho or yeah, something. Yeah, Lesotho. They, they, they won by four goals. Yeah, and they played on AstroTurf. Yeah. And it, it, you could tell that the telepathy of the play, it wasn't really there. Yeah. You know, unlike when you're on a grass yeah. field. Uh, I'm yet to see a Champions League game. Mm -hmm. being played on an Astro Astro Tech, Tech, Because they know the gravity of, of it. They know it's not as good as a natural field. But that's what we have. And you also have to understand that Sao Tome is an island. Yeah. They don't have the luxury of having land like we do. True. So the best they can do is to have this Astro Turf so that they can have game. So I think we will be fine. I think we will be okay. Now, talk to me about that middle that we saw in that game against South Africa. Um, if you listen to Kwesi Apia, it's more likely that it will be replicated in the next game. Baba Idrisu was spoken about as one of the main performers in that first game. Now, for a debutant, he looked very confident on the ball, intercepting play, distributing the ball. He plays in the Spanish La Liga. There you go. Just quick thoughts on the, on the young chap, what you made of his performance and what allowed him to feel at home like that in what was supposed to be a pressure debut. I've known him for a long time, and uh, well, he's a Tema boy, so ah. <laughs> you know how we Tema guys are proud yeah. of our own. And uh, I also know Coach very, very well. Coach mm. is my, was my captain when I went to Black Star, yeah. so me and him, we have a good relationship. And I know he's been talked about for a while. Hmm. Uh, we are waiting for the right time to bring him in. Yeah. And he plays weekday. He plays week, 90 times, minutes all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. And he's very composed on the ball. Uh, a lot of guys in Ghana haven't really seen him because we only watch the EPL. True. We don't really watch La Liga. True. But um, I travel all over the world and I see some of these games. Yeah. He's so comfortable with the ball. Very, very comfortable. You can say that about him. You can say that about Alfred Duncan. Yeah. I think that guy is overdue to play for the Black Stars because True. he's been playing for the past five, six years in Serie A yeah. regularly. Yeah. You know? So people who are, have been in those situations, when they come to the national team, if the nerves are down, they mm -hmm. play well. Mm. You know, they need the comfort of the team, the whole squad, yeah. to, to boost them. And I think, you know, the leadership of the Black Stars made it comfortable for Baba. I was very, very thrilled. The way he composed himself, yeah. you know, he could, he could have done more, mm -hmm. but he stuck to his role. Yeah. Win the ball and pass, win the oh, ball and pass, which made him, you know, excellent. But we shouldn't just jump to one uh, performance. Yeah. We should wait. I know Ghanaians, we like to create a uh, thing, you know, uh, heroes out of nothing. But we should give him time, <laughs> let him play yeah. four, five, six matches. We see the progression that he has. Because, you know, we as players, sometimes we get swollen headed. True. You know, we see that everybody likes us. And then instead of us raising our game, oh, we feel pompous. 
let's relax and push him, put him in the right spot, let him play his game, mm. and I think he's going to help us a lot coming in, in the future. I mean, do you see him making that spot his own? Because that's a spot that has been owned for a long time by the likes of a free aqua and even more recently, Thomas Partey, depending on how we are playing tactically. Mm -hmm. He's what, 23 years. Um, what's the next level for him to go? Like, just in case he wants to make this position his own for the next couple of years. The competition will make him great. If he plays for his t uh, club regularly yeah. and he comes to the national team and has somebody compete with him in that position, he he'll, be a, he'll be a better player. You look at Jordan Ayew. Yeah. I mean, up top, it wasn't easy for him. He was in and out of the team, but the competition, he was playing with one of the best players Ghana yeah. has ever produced, yeah. our top scorer, our captain, mm -hmm. and he had to come out to show the world that, look, it's about time you gave me a chance. When he was given the chance, he took it. So that's what Baba needs to know, and that's what I think he's going to do, because in that central position, we have quality players around the world. You know, Wakasu didn't come because of his mm -hmm. hand. He'll be ready for the next game. We need him. Benezo Fori is in uh, New York City FC, yeah. playing excellently. He might also come in. And then he, Baba, also will be there. And then Thomas Party, like you said, will also be there, depending on the formation we want to play. So competition in that position will make him a better player. Because if he knows there's somebody behind him, mm -hmm. and if he doesn't do well, somebody might take his position, yeah. trust me, he will do well. And, and that's what we need in all the positions. We need that in the right back. Yeah. But we only have uh, Andy Yadom. True. You know, Harrison has been injured, so yeah. he hasn't been there. But only Yadon plays on the right. We need two or three players to compete with him to make him a better player. You know, on the left, we have three, which is yeah. fine. And if our good old Kojo comes back, mm -hmm. he will make it even four and make it more competitive. On the left wing, we have <coughs> Jeffrey Schlopp, which yeah. we didn't even invite to come in this time. So the players are there. But to get the best out of the players, they have to compete for the positions. And that, that will make our team a good team. Let me take you back on the tangent of competing for positions. Now, you mentioned Kojo Asamoah and perhaps if he'll be back in the national team. There's been this back and forth about him not agreeing on a role with head coach Kwesi Ape, and as a result, he's had to be left out of the team. Now, how do you view that argument, or how do you view that whole situation from where you sit? Kojo Samoa playing as a left fullback for his club and being employed, uh, asking to be employed as a number 10 when he comes to the national team. Kojo's situation is, is very difficult to explain because the Italian system is different from the system we play. Yeah. Kojo is not taxed to go and slide tackle people and kick people and do all those things if a natural left back in Ghana does. So when he comes to Ghana and you want him to play the natural left back most Ghanaians are accustomed to, he cannot do that. That's why he prefers when he comes to be a little bit up front or, yeah. or in the middle. Now, if the formation suits him, he yeah. doesn't mind being on the wing, but not necessarily a left back. Because left back, you have to cover your lines. You have to be the last line of defense when the ball is on the right. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't do that when he's in Italy. In Italy, it's different. He, he comes in and he helps more in the midfield and attack than he does defensively. Yeah. But in Ghana, it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, he has his first you number know, one task yeah. is to defend. Yeah. And we all know Kojo is not a young guy. He doesn't mm -hmm. have the legs no more. But the brains are there. Yeah. And you have to look at where, what team he's playing for and the competition he's at. I mean, he's one of our best players. True. And he's not a bench warmer. He's an everyday player, mm -hmm. both in the league and in the Champions True. League. So he's somebody we have to accommodate into our team because his experience mm -hmm. will help these young lads go very, very far uh, in the national team. Well, let me just um, have footage of you of um, Thomas Partey there. Let's get back to the uh, conversation about the turf. So Partey was complaining about that Astro turf situation. He says that it's a problem but they have to focus and win either way. So uh, it, it's going to be a really interesting situation with regards to that one. So let's, let's take the pictures uh, as, as we speak now. Uh, the Astro Tev situation, Thomas Partey making a meal out of it. We'll see uh, if the Black Stars indeed will be able to navigate that particular situation. So we'll have the pictures for you right now. Uh, we are going to a difficult match. Uh, we are not used to playing artificial tech, but well, uh, we are professionals. Uh, we have to get used to it. And well, uh, I think we are motivated enough. And we are going to a game that uh, we don't need to expect less. We have to make sure we do our best and get away. It's a difficult game uh, with uh, less possession, I think. I don't know what will happen, but uh, I think we will have to play more of the second boss and also 
attack more. The people is more easy, you know, but the difficulty is the field, you know. As I said, we are not used to play with uh, our abilities that we have in this kind of pitches. So, well, uh, as I said, we have to get used to it. Forget about where we're going to play. We just need to go for a win and then we come back home safely. Well, I don't know, but uh, personally, I know we are doing a great job. We've been working harder. But from the fans and from the people, I don't know what they were expecting. But I think uh, we know what we can give and we are happy with so you heard Thomas Partey speaking there. He says that regardless of how it goes down, AstroTurf or no AstroTurf, a win is what Ghana must walk away with from Sao Tome, Joe. I agree with him 100%. You know, we have to win. And although there are no medals in this uh, world no more, mm -hmm. uh, I saw uh, what team beat Togo. Togo lost to Comoros yeah. at home. <laughs> you know, if it was Ghana... Every single player will have some a whip. We yeah. will whip them. Yeah. But they lost. So there are no minnows in, 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 in the world no more. Having said that, we have to go there and win. Um, the concentration shouldn't go on the turf. Mm. You know, the concentration to go on the game plan and how we are going to execute to win. And I think the coach is going to make sure of that. Forget about everything else. Yeah. It's a small country. Uh, the stadium, the popular uh, stadium is, I think the capacity is about 2,500. Oh. And which is our training yeah. capacity yeah. <laughs> we are playing here. So uh, we should forget about everything, the concentration to be on how to win the game. And it doesn't have to be pretty. Look, a win is a win. If you play bad and you win, great. We don't have to go there and think, uh, we are Ghana, so no, everybody should fit. No, no, no. That era is past and gone, long time. Mm. Now we have to work hard for it. And I think our boys are up to it. I think they are. Now, talking about the qualifiers itself, you, you did mention that the qualifiers are easy and it's always the tournament itself that brings its own issues now back in your day during qualifying campaigns what are some of the issues players go through i'm, I'm talking about this because qualifiers are not um something you play continuously you play let's say now there's an international break and then yeah. you come back again how difficult is it to keep your focus in the qualifying series when you have to play once come back two months later, sometimes four months later. How, how difficult is that? For the players, it's not really difficult. Mm -hmm. But for the coaching staff, it is. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a tall order mm -hmm. for the coaching staff because they have to maintain their momentum. And because you don't play every week, it's difficult. Because you, our last game, our game against Atomi yeah. will be our last game of the year. Yeah. Our next game is in March. March. So just imagine that distance. Yeah. But the Ghanaian public don't care about that. They care about the win. Mm. So it's up to the coaching staff to try to motivate these players to be on the same level when they come into the national team. And it's very difficult. Some of the players, because they're playing regularly for their clubs, don't really mind because they're active. They are all right. But when they come down, mm -hmm. the, the, the idea that the last game they played against Atome, they won. So this game also they have to win. It's very difficult for them to adjust. Uh, I always put the... the, 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 the uh, the pressure on the coaching staff. And I think it's up to them to, to bring out a plan yeah. or a strategy that works for our team. That's why I like what coach is doing or yeah. what he's been doing, bringing in players here and out. Because there are a lot of Ghanaian players abroad. Hmm. Good ones, very good ones. True. But because we don't utilize them, sometimes they want to play for other countries. True. So I like the fact that he's been bringing them, he's been exposing them, people mm -hmm. have seen them. Yeah. So that when it's time for him to make a pool of a squad, it will be easier for him to do. And and I think he's doing a great job. I think the coach is doing a very, very you, good You've job. just mentioned something that's brought my attention to a whole new conversation that I think we'll talk about just about when we come back from the break there. We'll talk about Latif blessing his talent and wanting to play for the United States. Now, he's made this pronounce, pronouncement three times already in just the last six months. Three times already. So we'll talk about that in a bit. And then also, Kwesi Apia's contract expires after next month. We'll delve into that as well on the tracker. So let's quickly take a break here on the tracker. When we come back, like I said, we'll talk about the future of Apia, the future of Blessing, and also Ghana's under-23 team. Joe knows all about playing with the Meteors and the Olympic team because he was there in 1996. Stay with us here on the tracker. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back to the Chaka here on City TV. We've been discussing the Black Stars in depth. They are taking on Sao Tome and Principe a little later today. That game uh, is at 1 p.m. Uh, so we'll be um, huddling behind our televisions to watch that particular one. We'll talk about two more items and then we'll move the conversation on to Ghana's Black Meteors because they also have a game coming up against our neighbors, Cote d'Ivoire. Now, Joe, quick thoughts on Latif Blessing. Like you were mentioning, when players feel as if they are performing at the highest level, and they are not being given a look in. They look at the circumstances around them and say, you know what, I could be playing for the United States because based on my MLS performances, they look like they appreciate my talent. Should he make the move? I mean, based on what's going on. Uh, I think it's personal. That, that one is, is, is his decision. But mm. uh, if I was his manager, yeah. I wouldn't be advising him to be saying, speaking like that. Mm. Because these things, you let them come to you. You don't force yourself on them. If the U.S. national team wants you, they will come get you because you play in their league. Yeah. You know, they will approach you first before even Ghana will. But if you, it's like you give an ultimatum. If you don't get me, I'm going here. You don't, as a player, you don't say that. But having said that, he's played very, very well this year. He's one of the best players in the yeah. league. And they went to the semifinals. Yeah. One of his teammates won the MVP of the league. Mm -hmm. And most of the assists came from Latif. Yeah. So he, he's done very well for himself this year. And even in the last year, he, mm -hmm. he did extremely well. The club he's playing for now is a new team. Yeah. They, they, this is their first, first season. season yeah. you know, and for them to go all the way to the semifinal is great. And their coach, Bob Bradley, was my coach yeah. uh, when I was in New York. Ah. So we know each other very, very well. And I know how, how intense he is when he comes to player selection. And for Latif to make the math all this while, uh, being consistent in the yeah. team and all that, I think he deserves a chance in the national team. But who knows? I mean, Coach Kosiapi has been selecting players all over the world, players True. that you and I don't even know of. True. So he might be in his plans, something that we might not know. So all I can tell him is he should just go out. Everybody needs a good player. True. Every coach needs a good player. So continuity with him, playing well, just be quiet and do your thing. Yeah. And somebody will see you and you know, give you the nod. But I think he, he's played very well to deserve a call -up. Let's talk about Apia himself and his future because his contract runs out in what just about a month or so. After the AFCON, uh, there's been a lot of clamoring to get rid of the manager, saying he's not good enough, he won't win as an AFCON. What do you make of that whole situation? Well, I'm very happy you asked me that. Um, I think Ghanaians should understand that it takes a lot to yeah. make a decision. And a national team coach's decision, yeah. it's not a joke mm. that somebody will say, oh, he's done, so we should fire him and bring some... It doesn't work like that. There's a lot of planning that goes behind the scenes for that. Yeah. And we should all understand that the normalization committee just finished their work. Our new FA president hasn't been in office for a month. True. He's been here for merely two weeks. Yeah. And people won't change. They want the coach to go on. It doesn't work like that. The, the administ new administration has to sit down, assess what we have, mm -hmm. see if he can continue. If the contract runs out in Zema, so be it. But our next game is in March. Yeah. So we have about three, four months to plan who our next coach is going to be. So I don't think we should... You know, Rush into the decision. No, I think we should take time, make the right decision. That, for me, that's very, very important. I don't think we should rush into any decision. Mm -hmm. If we want the coach to continue, in the next three, four months, we will know. If we want to bring somebody new, we have to make sure we know who we are bringing. If he, he likes the philosophy of our team, yeah. <clears throat> if the players that we have... Is yeah. the pedigree that he wants to move forward. That all these things come into play when we are selecting a coach. So I think, as Ghanaian, we should relax. Let them play this Atome game. Let's, yeah. That will put us on top of the... If we have six points, yeah. we'll put us on top of the group. Mm -hmm. Then we can relax and come and see what the next step will be for us. Hmm. Now, talk to me a little bit about something Apia himself mentioned. Now, he was asked about adding C.K. Akono to his bench. And he says that it's good that you give other coaches an opportunity to learn what is around the national team and that it's better a fellow countryman of his than an expatriate coming in. What do you make of that debate as well? Should we, after appear, stick to our own and abolish the practice of hiring expatriate coaches? I don't think my, my opinion matters anyhow. You know, I can say what I want, yeah. but it doesn't really matter. The, what we pay people to be in administration to make that selection. Yeah. That, that is their job. Yeah. Uh, for me, as a former player of the Black Stars and also as a, uh, a Ghanaian, yeah. definitely I want our Lucas to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I want. Yeah. Uh, I also want us to win. So there is that balance that winning and local coaches. Yeah. You have to find the balance. But for me, I think winning is ultimate for Ghana because 
I saw when Ghana won the last time. I was fortunate for me. I was born and I was around. There are a lot of young lads like you yeah. who have not seen Ghana, the black star, yeah. win any win trophy. trophy yeah. So the pressure is there for our administrators to find the right balance or the right coach who will take us to the next level. If it's our local lad, great. If it's an expatriate, good. But it has to be somebody who will bring us trophy. Mm. It doesn't have to be anything, but the focus should be who will bring us trophy. So for me, uh, if you ask me, yeah. I want our locals to do it. Yeah. I'll be great. You, you know, I saw what Algeria did with their local. They won the cup. I saw what Senegal did with their local. They went all the way to the, the final. final. So for me, I want our local to be there. But I want a coach who will bring us trophy. Hmm. That is the ultimate. Well, let me read a few messages before uh, we go on. So messages coming through. This one here um, says that this is from Adam. It says, hi, I'm really enjoying uh, the show. Um, this says that for today's game, Sao Tome will be surely on the ropes. This one also from CJ Sapon from Nungwa says that, uh, good morning, Ben and Joe. Please, we Ghanaians want our players to give their best when they are called upon. That's, that's, that's all. Uh, so he says that they want players to give off their best when uh, they are called upon. So more messages are coming through. I'll be reading them as and when uh, they come through. Now, let's move on to the under-23 team the Black Meteors, because they have a crucial task on their hands as yes. well. But I feel as if they have two lifelines. So <laughs> they almost, almost cannot fail in this circumstance. They, um, they had everybody on their backs after that defeat to Egypt. They managed to turn it around against a team that I thought uh, were going to be a thorn in their flesh. And now they go up against Cote d'Ivoire. Before I even talk about the game, what is it about our neighbors Cote d'Ivoire? That makes that make it so difficult for us to break them down in matches because every time I watch us play the Ivorians, it's almost as if we are tense going into the games. Uh, I think Ghana, our biggest rival, yeah. is Nigeria. We've mm. made it like that. Mm. So anybody else in Africa, we don't really regard. It could be Burkina Faso, Togo, Mali, Ivory. We don't really regard them. We yeah. don't take them as as our rivals. Yeah, and they take advantage of that. We think Nigeria is our rivals. Ivory Coast think Ghana is their rival. So anytime ah, they play against, yes. They any, take us as seriously as we take Nigeria. Exactly. But we don't take them that serious. Hmm. And I think that is where the problem has been. 92, yeah. when they won the AFCON on us, we, AFCON, which we should have won, by yep. the way, on yep. penalties. Yep. I think they had a little hand over us. They believed that they have beaten the mighty Ghana. Mm. Flip back to 96, when we met them in South Africa, we yeah. beat them hands down yeah. with a game which I played. And yeah. we were very, very hyped yeah. to win, and we won. But it wasn't a big deal for us Ghanaians beating Ivory Coast, but it was a big mm. deal for Ivorians beating Ghana. Yes. So for them, the, the table always turns for them. And that's why we haven't really cracked them. We don't see them as, as rivals. And mm. it's something that we have to change our mentality because they've been a thorn in our flesh for a while. They beat yeah. us on penalties in 92, and yeah. they beat us on penalties again. Lately, yeah. <laughs> Lately. In the last half court. Yes. So I think we have to flip our, our anger on Nigeria yeah. to Ivory Coast <laughs> so mm. that our concentration will be on them like their concentration is on us. Yeah. Having said that, I think this, going into this, this game is going to be very tough. And mm. I saw the Ivorian team play. Yeah. They are a very, very good team. They are a solid team. I saw our team. We haven't played well in this tournament. Yeah. We haven't. We won against Mali, barely, because Mali had a goal, uh, a chance in the first half. And if that ball had entered, <laughs> story, would have been a different everything would have been different. I like the team that played in Algeria. I watched the Algerian game yeah. when we were playing for the qualified. That was an excellent team, excellent yeah. display. Yeah. I didn't see that in this tournament. And I think part of it is because some of the clubs didn't release the players, the players for, for the coach. So it made it very difficult for the coach. We haven't hit our stride yet, but I think if we do, yeah. which... I mean, winning this game also made it possible for us. The momentum is on our side. True. I think we'll be a difficult team to beat. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we might even win the tournament mm. if we are able to go through Ivory Coast. Yeah. So, like you said, we have two lifelines. Yeah. We hope that we don't blow both. Winning one will put us in the Olympics. I don't really care for them to win the tournament. Yeah. I want us to go to the Olympics. Olympics because we haven't been there in 16 years. I, I just and, about to ask you, why? Yeah. And I was in the Olympics in 96. Yeah. And I think it's the biggest spectacle every footballer. Because it's not... When you go to the World Cup, yeah. only football fans watch the World Cup. When you go to the Olympics, every athlete, Sp everybody sports, who likes sports watches. Yeah. So it, it's a very big stage. And yeah. I hope for the players' sake that they are able to make it, to go and experience how great it is to be part of the Olympics, uh, Olympic team. Now, 
I'm sure that in the various years where we've not qualified, different factors have accounted for yeah. it. But yeah. if you look at it generally, what's that one thing that used to exist during your time when you folks qualify for the Olympics that doesn't seem to be present anymore as far as the modern era Mexico's teams are concerned? I think it's preparation. We don't prepare as much. We don't, we don't prioritize the Olympics like oh. we did in the past. Yeah. You know, Ghana is the first country mm -hmm. that won a medal in football at the Olympics. Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. We did that. And instead of us continuing, we took our eye off and we moved our concentration to the World Cup, mm -hmm. which was great. Yeah. But we've been to the World Cup three times. Yeah. But I think our priorities in the Olympics have shifted. So we don't prepare well. I think we have to change that. Hmm. Every tournament we go in, preparation is the key. We yeah. have to prepare very, very well. Know the players we want, the coaching staff. Everything they need as a team to move yeah. on has to be yeah. given to them. And, you know, once we prepare well, most countries are scared of us. Look, when I was playing for the Black Stars, mm -hmm. anytime we go to other countries to play, yeah. the referees and the opposing teams, they take pictures with us. We don't take <laughs> pictures with them. Yeah. I know, I remember one time we were playing against Gabon. Yeah. And the referee came to our dressing room to take a picture with Abedi Pele, our captain, the yeah. referee of the yeah. game. So that's how they see us. I read uh, something two, three days ago about from uh, J.J. Okocha, yeah. who I think is one of the best players Africa has ever produced. And he said something about Ghana, yeah. which I know a lot of Ghanaians will find offensive. But it's true. He says Ghana team is underachievers. I, re I read that too, and I, I, I also sort of agreed with him. Yes, you will be upset with him, but his assessment was, was on point. Yeah. Because they look at us as the best team in Africa. Yet, when we go, we don't do that. Our level of talent doesn't reflect exactly. in the trophies you that know, we have. We have more talent than Nigerians. We have more talent than Cameroon, than Zambia. Yeah. Me, but those three countries have won the AFCON. We haven't. So when you make that statement, it really hit home for me that we mm -hmm. have to change our, our focus. We have to now go in and dominate Africa like we used to do in, in the past. I, I have reservations about three senior players being added to the Olympic team. What do you think about that phenomenon? What it is, is it's a choice. The coach doesn't have to include them. They, the FIFA just yeah. gives that option sure, yeah. because they want the Olympics to be exciting. That, that's all it is. You know, these under 23 guys, most of them are not known in the world. Yeah. And in the Olympics, they want famous people. So that's why I said you Ramos is fighting to be in the Olympic the team, team of the Spanish, you know. So that is why they put it there. But it's not necessary or, or it's not f by force. Do you feel as if we, we need it in our situation now? If we're going to win the cup, yes. Mm. <laughs> if we want to win the cup, we definitely do. And somebody like Dede or Jordan or yeah. Thomas Partey, one of our bright lights, you know, when is put in there, yeah. I think it's going to help. But having said that, it all depends on the coaching staff. If the coaching staff feels it fit yeah. to bring somebody in, because all has to do with chemistry. True. I benefited from them in 96 when I was one of the older players to join the team. They had their team, their yeah. squad, which was playing very, very well. Mm -hmm. And then they added me. Me and my, my brother. At that time, what, what, what team were you playing in at that time? I was playing in Holland then. Okay. I, was, I was in Sparta, Rotterdam. Sparta, Rotterdam yes. yeah. And my brother and I, when my brother was playing in Greece mm -hmm. as a goalkeeper, so he came to join, and I think Afododu also was one of yeah. the three. And we helped the team go all the way to the quarterfinals, where we met Brazil, yeah. which, again, which we should have won, but we lost. We were leading 2-1, yeah. and we lost 4-2. So that three overage players, it's not necessary for the coach to add them. But mm -hmm. if you want to win and you want yeah. the team to go forward, maybe one or two will, will, you know, some of these young guys, they look up to our, you know, established players, yeah. you know. Yeah. Pate, somebody even inspired wanted to, them to want to play. Yes, somebody even wanted to take a picture with Pate. <laughs> you know, so those are some of the things we might need. If yeah. the, you know, the need comes, but it's all up to the coach. Once you have your team, do you need enforcement? If yes, why not bring them in? Again, um, another phenomenon has been spoken about is the local players played a good part of the qualifiers, and then for the Algeria game, I believe when um, a lot of the foreign base players teams allowed them to play, a lot of them were replaced, and most of them were not happy. Um, what, what do you make of that situation where local players sort of sweat and put in effort to get to a certain level, and then they are replaced by their um, counterparts who play uh, outside the country? I'll answer it twofold. Yeah. As a player, I'll yeah. be very upset that I've done all the qualifiers, yeah. and then the tournament, you don't take me. Mm. I'll be very upset. But as a coach, yeah. I want to win. Coaches 
are judged on results. Mm. So whatever a coach will do to win, they will do it. Not to cut you, but is there a, a direct relationship between playing outside the country and being better than the guy who plays down here? Oh, definitely, yes. Because when you are here, yeah. your aim is to go out. Why are you going out? You are going out to better yourself. Mm. So if somebody is out playing, not somebody on the bench, playing regularly for his team, I think because the facilities you have out there is not the facilities you have here. Mm. There could be great players who play in the local league. Yeah. Great. But so far, since the NC came, we yeah. haven't had any local league. So mm. it will be very difficult on a coach to rely on our, on our players. True. Now, the talent is here. We have some of the best talents in, in the world true. for us Ghanaians. True. We have to now tap the talent and make it ours. And we mm. can only do that when the league starts. That's the true. coaching staff will look for players that will help the team, that That's will true. be part of the team. But like you rightly said, if I play the qualifiers and you don't take me to the tournament, I'll be very, very free. So I understand where the players yeah. are coming from. Finally, before we wrap the show up, a message to the Black Stars first of all and then the Meteors. I wish the Black Stars all the best. <clears throat> I know a lot of people expect them to win. Yeah. Uh, I've been there before. I know how difficult it is. Uh, I think they should go there and have their game plan in check. They should forget about the game they played against South Africa. Go there and... Mm -hmm. You know, exhibit what they are capable of. And once they do that, I'm sure we're going to win. And for the Meteors, yeah. it's been a long time since we went to the Olympics. True. Now we have two chances. Two chances yeah. to go to the Olympics. I'll pray for them. I want the whole nation to pray for them. Yeah. Because it will benefit all of us. They are going to Japan. There will be a lot of people whose future will be in Japan. If this tournament, if these guys make it to Japan. Yeah. So I'll pray for them and I, I wish them all the best also. Hmm. Let me read my final batch of messages and then we'll wrap the show up here. This one here coming from Peter Kofiche from Hohoi um, in the Volta region says, I want to know why players are picked from other regions and they leave out the Volta region team. <laughs> By the way, I pray that God blesses the Black Stars to bring back the love. I don't know about Volta region teams being left out. By and the way, I'm from the Volta region. So, Aha, so you see, <laughs> you, you, you can't really be justified <laughs> with that particular submission. This one here from... Nana Damwa from Bogos who says that though the pitch isn't what we expect, we surely will win with a lot of goals. So that's uh, it for the message section. Joe, it's been amazing uh, speaking to you. Very informative Thank you. Uh, today on the show. Hopefully we can bring you in some other time. Hopefully. <laughs> you had the man there, uh, Joe Addo, former Black Stars captain, played with the 1996 Olympic team as well, sharing his wealth of knowledge with us. Next week, same time, we'll be here on the tracker. Keep watching City TV. Thank <laughs> you.